Hello, ladies and gentlemen, everyone in between and beyond. My name is Taylor, and this is the brand new Isometric Souls like Nano Apostle. Uh, developed by 18 Light Game Limited and published by P Cube. I was given a code through Press Engine, so thank you to Press Engine and P Cube for the code. I will not let that affect my opinions of the game and the parts that I have experienced, which unfortunately there's not many. Now, I am someone who has all achievements in all three numbered Dark Souls titles. Sekiro and Elden Ring, played through the original Demon Souls, and most of Bloodborne. So believe me when I tell you that this was the biggest test of my skills yet, and I could not make it past the first proper boss. Now let me rewind a bit. Uh, we open with a war-torn country and some people discussing their lost loved ones and the ones that are still alive. Hoping to free them from the city, we awaken as a young girl who has a seemingly symbiotic relationship with some sort of nanotechnology that tasks her with fighting cyber creatures. The girl we'll become to name Anita is naturally hesitant and the symbiote claims that she simply needs to move and be aware of her surroundings. Now, she takes this extremely well and just says, okay. I think, you know, people would naturally be freaking out a little more if they found a symbiotic creature with massive blades attached to their back, but hey, who am I to judge? Thus begins a short combat tutorial where you learn the basics of the light attack, parry, gun mechanic and the grappling hook. I'll explain the latter two. The gun acts as a sort of critical hit like it did in Bloodborne, so you can leave your enemy stunned and vulnerable for visceral attacks. This is where you use your grappling hook to pull yourself in towards the enemy and strike them. The gun also serves as the only form of healing that I could find in the game. Now using it on enemies will, again, stun them if you hit them at the right moments, but even if you just shoot them normally it creates a small diamond above their health bar that will fill up as you attack them with melee. And when that diamond fills fully, it will heal you for a very, and I'm emphasizing very, small amount. The game is very precise and certainly well crafted. Uh, I will have some later critiques, but I do want to stress that I believe this is a well designed game. And if this is the intended difficulty, then I do not wish for the developers to change it. Just because it didn't necessarily click with me doesn't mean it won't click with someone else. This game requires almost frame perfect parries and dodging which I have proven I am very bad at. In this one and actually a lot of others that I think about it. So after the tutorial, you meet with another robot thing who claims that the company is making war mechs, kind of like symbiotic androids, uh, and was the first of many experiments. You being one of the last and the project clearly being abandoned. She got stuck to the point where her body, it got to the point where her body was destroyed and her mind was uploaded to the supercomputer thing and so she's been living there for presumably decades. She unlocks our skill trees uh, so we can start purchasing skills and says we need to go through a combat trial, different than the one we just went through. Now this for me is where the real trouble starts. The literal first boss was so hard I could not beat it after half an hour trying. Now, that isn't a long time and I will elaborate on why I spent so little time in just a minute. The game has an interesting system. It gives you small mini objectives that are tallied after each attempt. And when you've completed one of them, you are awarded a skill point. This means that you can still be rewarded when you fail and hopefully ease some of the pressure. This means that you can still be rewarded when you fail and hopefully ease some of that pressure by giving you a reward even if you didn't quite succeed in the fight. Though unfortunately that progress is limited to your story progression. To what skills you have unlocked, Skills and what you unlock are based on story progression, meaning you are limited in what you can choose to invest in. Now, I really appreciate this because it means you can often walk away with some sense of progression and possibly work towards, you know, that next skill that will make the difference between another defeat and the elusive victory you're seeking. It also entices you to replace some later enemies again and again, or come back to earlier ones, with, you know, the new skill points that you have just to earn even more and potentially unlock more upgrades. The problem that I encountered wasn't that I didn't have enough skill points, it was that even with the skill points I had unlocked, I did not feel well enough equipped to handle the first boss. There was nowhere else I could go to to grow stronger. I had excess skill points, but I didn't have skills that I could invest them into. This meant I was limited to the three that I unlocked and two that I could equip to try to figure out my way through. I was really left to bang my head against the wall until it finally broke, and usually I'm fine with that, but the issue for me was timing. 
as I have other games to review, and my increasing frustration at tackling again and again and again. I do believe that this boss was very well designed, and has relatively good tells, even if it requires a reaction speed that is beyond what I can do regularly on a comfortable level. I was certainly too aggressive in how I played the game, but that's where my first problem comes in. With the way the gun mechanics work, you need to be able to hit the boss in melee to, you know, fill up your uh, diamond healing meter. I'm not sure what to call it. And the problem is, I had a skill that increased the amount that I would heal, and it was still minuscule. So even though I would, you know, parry the boss, one of his projectiles, stun him using the gun, get a couple hits in, and maybe get the healing here and there, it was so minimal that when I was attacked, I didn't par and I didn't parry properly. You know, I could almost get one shot. I could easily get two shot. And there was no way for me to comfortably heal a significant portion of my health to the point where I felt good being aggressive. But I didn't have any choice if I wanted to keep healing. It created this weird loop of be aggressive, but you're really going to die fast if you are. And then if you're not aggressive enough, you don't get any healing. So it could have just been the way that I was playing that I didn't understand what the game wanted me to do, but it didn't feel great. And that wasn't helped by my limited kit, which was my other real problem is, again, I purchased the three skills that you could use, but they didn't feel like they were making enough of a difference to me to be able to beat this boss. I didn't feel like I could just use the skills in a different combination or a different way to really progress. I would get the boss of the second phase more than a couple times, and then I would just get absolutely annihilated because I was so overwhelmed. And again, there was nothing else I could do in the sense there were no other skills I could invest in. So it would leave me just banging my head against this wall, trying again and again and again and again, to the point where I stopped having fun with it. I do want to say this was the beta version, so I don't know if the full release will have the same level of damage and healing scaling, uh, what the difficulty of that will be, or if there have been some tweaks. But I do want to see it balanced a little better just especially around the healing system because having the only way to heal being so aggressive you know in your face rather in the boss's face and no other options to at least heal in a more quiet just second to take your breath is very stressful to me and gives me no downtime to recover and i just i feel like i'm getting overwhelmed to the point where i can't you know just take a breath and then get back into the fight it's just you have to be on constantly it is a very unforgiving system and i personally think the healing should be increased or the player should have an alternative healing solution however if the devs want it to be this way i don't think it's a bad design just one that will certainly turn away a lot of potential players like myself so with all that being said thank you ladies gentlemen everyone opportunity to be on for being here uh i would love to recommend this game to you with the caveat that is extremely difficult and will challenge you in ways that few other games do. So if you believe you can handle that challenge, by all means go for it. Because again, it is a well-designed game. It's just designed to be, like, teeth-grindingly hard. So I understand if you're up for the challenge. I also understand if you're not. Do let me know in the comments down below what you thought of the art style, the gameplay, just everything in general. Uh, the game will naturally be linked down there. So please feel free to check it out. I believe it's going for a relatively cheap price which i think is always good especially for a smaller indie but that will do it for me thank you everyone for being here uh if you want me to check out any other indie games please let me know and i'll see you in the next one Bye bye